that we don't know and we have to figure out how to talk about them when we don't know them uh much like this intro uh i'm joined as always by my friends allison who is a desert tortoise uh worshiper and i was gonna say like repair man or repair woman or something <laughs> but you can really repair a desert tortoise because they're perfect as they are uh, and um, Gary, who is currently hunting alligators, uh, he's auditioning to be the new um, crocodile alligator guy. So, so if he loses a limb, then that's, I guess, part of the uh, the job requirements. Um, this is a sh podcast where we talk about things. Allison comes up, with, comes up to us with a topic. Gary and I don't know what the topic is beforehand. We probably don't know what the topic is afterhand. And <laughs> try to talk about it in sort of a, a way that kind of sort of makes sense. Kind of like Balderdash. It's, uh, except it's a podcast. And then we answer questions and things. Indeed. Yeah. That sounds about right. I mean, that's what I'm... <laughs> That's what I was expecting when I called into this thing this morning, so that works for me. <laughs> Gary, so. is your shirt an actual NASA shirt, or is your shirt like a fake NASA shirt? Okay, it's an actual NASA shirt. Well, I mean, it wasn't made by NASA, so that's I know, make it but fake, like, I've, I I've, because I've got the same design, except it says Rogue, and I was wondering if yours is yeah. other than NASA. No, this is like a, this is an old one. I don't know if you can tell, like, the logo is like wearing off. I wear this oh, shirt I thought quite that often. Was just, as you I thought that was just, uh, the design? Yeah, like cleverly uh, uh, worn, um, Ar no. artificially <laughs> faded. It's, uh, no, it's, it's officially faded. <laughs> like the kids with the holes in their jeans on purpose. Ah, yeah. oh, youths. I remember, I remember back when I was a kid uh, and watching Nickelodeon and there was a workshop demo thing on how to get uh, holes in your jeans, how to put holes in your jeans. Mm -hmm. How to With discuss them properly. Yeah, yeah. Like a belt sander, right? Uh, they use sandpaper, yeah. I mean, a belt sander probably worked better. That wasn't what they were using. They were just using sandpaper. But... And I was like, I could do that. And then I tried it, and I was like, no, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> You're capable of anything except that. <laughs> okay, so the topic this week. Ooh, nice background. Then Gary disappears because he got eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> Looks like Florida. I know, it does. It's, it's very much what I imagine Florida to be like. It is like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> what if, if you come across anybody on your walk, they're just going to be so confused about <laughs> what you you're like doing. Like rendering with like headphones on. Yes. Yeah. Well, like how do you explain yourself? yourself? I don't. I just mute and say hello and keep on walking. I don't. I mute on here, not to that. Not in, in, in real maybe, life. Maybe I, just, maybe I just wave at him. It depends on, like, if I'm in the middle of making a point, I might just give a head nod. Ask him, hey, can we, you please sign this uh, release form so you can be on this podcast? Oh, yeah. This is a beautiful view. Release camera forms. <laughs> like, for that, for that particular. That's so funny. This is confidential stuff. The release forms, there's an, an NDA, there's, there's all sorts of confidential There's a DNA, yeah. there's an RNA. Yeah. Um, so let's get to it. The topic this week is pogonology. Pogonology. Yeah. Um, I actually know what pogonology is. This is um, a launch mechanism for rockets that use like a one bounce <laughs> to get into space. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say it's, it's the study of, of the pogo effect. So yeah, 
Yeah, does the do those does the rockets uh, the, using the Poganology technology? Um, yeah. Do they do they have to be uh, dropped from a particular height, or is there some sort of like spring recoil system that they use instead? That's the really exciting part of the technology is that it's it's uh, it's like rapidly growing. I think Blue Origin has some great prototypes um, uh, using the spring method, and I guess we'll see. What's the something. spring made out of? Um, alloy. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything in space is made out of an alloy. Alloy. <laughs> what is alloy? Oh, we're changing the topic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just like get in there, um, figure it out. <laughs> I can't answer that. Honestly, honestly, uh, Pogo slash spring recoil system uh, would not be the worst uh, idea for getting uh, spaceships off of other planets. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you'd have to like, like physics dictates that if you bounce something, right, it's not going to bounce as high as it was when it came down, right? But wouldn't it so, depend on the gravity situation? Right. Like the atmosphere of that. Yeah, you just need to get it going. Just like, well, I, and I, I was wondering if maybe in conjunction with that, like you could do like a quick little burn, get mm -hmm. some height, and then come down. And then like <laughs> on the bounce, you'd really fire it off, mm. you know, so you'd get like the added bonus. But if you're going to do that, why wouldn't you just fire at the peak of the initial bump? Because the springs extra. and trampolines are more fun. Yeah, and you need the extra. It's hard to argue with that. <laughs> it's hard to argue with that. You need the extra oomph. I don't think, yeah, I don't think they're taking into the, the, the fun factor into consideration when they're bringing all the science and propulsion. That's what, that's, that's what NASA that's totally. Is. That's what physics is missing, is the that's fun. What There's no fun in physics. Um, they're, not, they're not focusing on it. They're not, it's there. They just need to like nurture it, add more springs. In all seriousness, Pogonautics, like nautic, like water, right? So is Pogonautics like when you get in, like a little above ground pool and you get in the middle and you like bounce up and down and it makes like enormous waves? Pogonautics. This... Uh, sure. Uh, I'm no. not sure that your logic is uh, sound, but we'll go along with that and we'll say yes. Oh, it was it was it was better on the the rocket thing. Is that what yes. you're saying? <laughs> well, you're changing Pogonology to Pogonautics, which is oh different industry really <laughs> i i misremembered what the topic was <laughs> pogonautics is just the whole yeah we're going from space to the ocean now yeah Pogo, so there was a Pogo prototype for a rocket oh, i don't know i can't remember what it was called but that so large they wouldn't have a like a launch pad they would float it out and then launch it from the ocean so i think it's a pretty brilliant idea it never happened um but well jacques but great idea. let it happen probably <laughs> yeah can you imagine the fish Fried fish floating on the surface. <laughs> fried fish. Or boiled fish, I guess not fried. <laughs> well, unless you believe that the ocean is just pure vegetable oil. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need a lot to fry that. You would. I don't you know would. that just one rocket would be enough to, to fry the fish in the ocean if it was pure vegetable oil. What um what is uh what does the suffix mean, Chris? Knowledge. Knowledge. Uh, the study of a thing. No, not even a study necessarily. It's it's a thing. That's what it means. Oh, I think you're right. Ology, biology. So pogon is the word we need to figure out. Pogon <laughs> yes. ology. Uh, obviously, obviously, it's it's you know the study of pogons. Um, and pogons, and pogons famously, are famously atoms that bounce. <laughs> Do you, either of you remember pogs? Have we talked yes. about pogs? Yes. 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 Sorry. I that's had. Not, that's not what this is in refer, ref, like referencing at all. I just. Okay. No, but it could be a blog dedicated to uh, pogs. I had a very small collection of pogs, but I very much enjoyed. I had like. I don't know, three pogs. 
Mm. I had a much larger collection than you. I think I probably had close to 20. I never really got on board. I didn't really understand. But I don't know that I ever actually played Pogs, like the game with people. I just had the things because they were like cool and collectible. Yeah. Oh, I played with a neighbor across the street, but we didn't play for keeps because I don't know. Whatever. Because you were kids and kids get angry when people take their shit. Yeah. And because yeah. Pogs is essentially gambling with something that's completely meaningless. Cardboard chips. Yeah. I don't I don't remember like what I can't I wish I could remember like what I had on my Pogs. Like what characters and whatever. I don't know, yeah. I don't it, it was didn't matter was, so much at the time. That was when I was um that was when I was beginning my my hair metal phase. So there's definitely like a skull on one of them at least. <laughs> Badass. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, and they, I bet it had like that metallic, like, oh, yeah. With like the foil. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but now, now, um, uh, Pokemon, some, like, you can get like Pokemon coins because, you know, in some, in some parts of, uh, some, cards or some things in Pokemon you have to flip a coin so there's actual like Pokemon coins that are essentially pogs. <laughs> I didn't know that. They're just plastic. But that's what they are. So I, I've seen I've seen them because my kids have a couple of them um from some deck they got or something. Um and yeah I was like that's a pog. It's not a coin, it's a pog. <laughs> You're like in my day. <laughs> so so back to Pogons. It's really bothering me. <laughs> not know what a pogon is. It's a it's a bouncy particle. Do you think do you think um it's it's what creates um uh it's what creates the pogon sphere, which oh, is no. <laughs> which is much like a Dyson sphere. The pogon yeah. sphere is uh sort of a gelatinous sphere that no matter how hard you push from any direction, it always bounces back to its perfect shape. Ooh. Huh. And this is the study of that? No, it's just that that sphere is made of pogons. Oh, like orbiting. Oh, all right. <laughs> I like uh, the the, the, techno the technology they use to bind the pogons together is really interesting, actually. Go on, <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> Didn't you do some sort of paper on that, Gary? <laughs> Did I write a paper on po how they bind pogons together yeah. in college? Uh, it was very. <laughs> That was your that was your, your thesis, right? It it may have been had I uh, succeeded in college, and it probably would have been very short and been like chapter one, double sided tape. <laughs> <laughs> I think as we covered my college experience was more about the um, uh, social aspect of being a human than the knowledge aspect. Well, that has to do with pogons. <laughs> I don't think it does. <laughs> <laughs> a party of yeah. chemists gets wild and crazy on one glass of wine. And they start drinking pogons, and then all hell breaks loose. Once you start slamming a, a maybe, few pogons down, it's it's curtain. maybe maybe it's maybe it's like the uh, the thing that happens when you get a bunch of uh, chemists together, and there is that um, it's a chemist orgy. I guess is where I'm going. <laughs> That's not a thing that we need to go to. <laughs> I thought maybe maybe not because we're maybe because we're not chemists. <laughs> I was classically trained. <laughs> what's the what's the term for? Is it a a bacchanalia? Is that the? Yeah. <clears throat> that's a, so so that's far away celebrating from a pogonology. <laughs> I don't know what that term means. What does that term mean? Uh, well, a... Bacchus is the god of. Uh, kind of gluttony i guess uh okay. like parties and drinking and sex and orgies so a yep. bacchanalia is a party that does all of those things or any like, a combination of those things can like access very, things. yeah it's it's like uh definitely like overindulgence of yeah, um, indulgence is what i was going for yeah so that definitely sounds like a research paper i would write <laughs> oh, maybe God. not right maybe just research <laughs> field study, field study. Field study. Yeah. <laughs> practicum. A practicum. A practicum in pogonology. Wow. This took a turn. Sorry, that's my bad. 
<laughs> Thinking about lab coats, I guess. <laughs> Thinking about lab coats makes you think of Bacchanalias? Uh, apparently. Seems to be the case. There's a turtle in the lake right now. Not to change the topic, but I saw something floating and I was pretty excited for a minute. I wonder if it'll because, show See, I immediately go true crime and go like, it's a body. <laughs> <laughs> Can I zoom in? I can't zoom in. No, there's no way you'll be able to see that. And he just dove down anyway. I feel like I'm being watched. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. <laughs> and then the tail takes a, a weird turn. Gary was being watched, but not realizing by what. Oh, there's the gator. <laughs> Figure in the woods. That'd be great. Mm. I well, this is kind of a weird thing. So the this uh, this property line is like up. I don't know if you can see behind me here. There's some houses right there. So only I don't know. 80 yards that way is like the back end of a neighborhood. And so it looks this lake. Definitely, you're like, right now, basically what's happening is you're the weird guy that's wandering around the woods in people's kind of extended backyards talking to himself, essentially. <laughs> it, <laughs> it might appear that way. That's yes, but at least he said he's wearing shoes this time. Okay, that's valid. <laughs> shoes. It's not. It's not. I the mean, bare, sandals. It's not the barefoot guy in the woods talking to himself, <laughs> wandering I, around in people's backyards. Yeah, we should walk over by the fire pit. Now you've got me all paranoid. Someone's going to come out here and be like, "Hey, what are you doing, buddy?" Well, <laughs> if you're in their backyard, they could very well. This is not. This is not their backyard. This is no. the school's <laughs> property. Anyway. Poganology. <laughs> oh man, I wish that I knew, like even had an inkling of what Pogon means, or Pogo. Well, we know what Pogo means. But do we? Like we know, it's we think when we you go to a club <laughs> and you start jumping up and down. Pogoing. That's the Pogo? That's Pogo. Did you ever own a Pogo stick as a kid? I did not own a Pogo stick ever. I think awesome. I was. I think I set foot on a pogo stick once in my life and fell off promptly. Yeah, they're not easy to do. Allison, did you own a pogo stick? No. It's it's have, it's. So I, I own two Saturn things though. That oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the oh, balance, yeah. but that's different. There's that's a pogo ball. I think. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the so pogo sticks are fun, but it's it's an interesting thing because you're kind of like jumping in slow motion, and it exaggerates your movement on the jump so hmm. i had I, I bought two at a garage sale in the same summer as a kid i think maybe a dollar a piece and i probably overpaid um <laughs> and so the plastic one or they had like plastic like foot pegs on it unbeknownst to me when i bought it like one of those was already broken so you couldn't <laughs> really use it the other one was this like rusty metal thing from probably like before there was like consumer protection agency um <laughs> That's and like, one. that's, that's the one I used. Um, yeah. And like, there was no, there was no like rubber foot on it. It was just like a metal pipe that came down and, and like, if you bounced it on somebody's foot, you were going to cut their toe off. Right. Um, and it had this like terrible squeak, like as the metal like shrieked past itself internal, like the shaft. Um, and um, so I got really good on that one. And so there were like little, yeah, there were like little circular marks like on the sidewalk in front of my house where I could like where I would pogo for I mean I could get as high as like 10 or 15 bounces before I wiped out and ate it um so for some family event my uncle was over and he had a few beers and was like let me try that oh, and did one bounce and that was the end of that pogo stick yeah I, I think like I don't remember what broke but I remember it being like everything <laughs> and it's accurate it just sort of disintegrated <laughs> yeah it was like I've had enough this is not the life for me I'm <laughs> As a hundred-year-old pogo stick from back when children, you know, it was probably made by a child. Like it was probably child labor involved in the creation of this metal pogo. Stick. It was a death trap. I'm not sure, like, why my parents weren't like, you know, mm. I mean, because like the spring was like totally like right there by your like everything. If you got in, and that spring expanded a lot. If you got something like jammed in there, it was gonna crunch like fingers or skin or anything. Um, yeah, but it, it was, didn't. But it didn't. So it was fine. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to tell about it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was great. I can picture exactly the kind of rusty metal 
that it was made out of too. And the handles, like you remember like the old style, like it was like barely a piece of plastic around the handle from like old BMX bikes. Like, that was the handle. The foot pegs were just like these metal like grating things sticking out, like welded on. Oh, it was it was industrial. I'm not sure like what the industrial use would be for a pogo stick, but if there was <laughs> one, this one came from like an factory where you needed to use a pogo stick uh, obviously uh launching rockets into space <laughs> you, had to, you had to bounce up to like light the rocket yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great engineer. yes pogonologist. Pogonologist. uh yeah pogo ball is another thing i fell off of yeah i think i tried that i, I think i did better on the pogo ball than, than i ever did on the pogo stick I, I think i could get a couple bounces but you never got much height on the pogo ball yeah no no like, ba- balance based things i'm just not like that's why i was never like skateboarder or like i skateboarded for a while oh. i had a really crappy skateboard I, d- I did not have the skateboard that had the two ends that i had a banana board that only had the one end mm. that went up oh. um and it was like super cheap but i at some point so my i when i turned i want to say like 14 or something my parents got me this brand new 12 speed bike and literally within a week it got stolen uh-huh. <laughs> and I didn't get another bike. Um, no. So uh, yeah, skateboard was uh, a mode of transportation that I used. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually walk, I actually skateboarded across towns uh, on occasion, like, like from, from my parents' house or my parents' apartment, which was like, you know, three cities down to, you know, the city where my grandparents lived sort of thing. Like, you know, I mean, like on residential streets and whatever, but yeah, I, I, not very fast and not very good because the board wasn't that good, but I skateboarded. I bought a real skateboard. Point A to point B. Yeah. Like when I was too old to be buying a real skateboard, I was probably, I don't know, like 19 or something. I bought like a nice skateboard thinking like, well, it'd be fun to know how to skateboard and like ollie and stuff. And I had from my like rollerblading days, I still had like a a pipe set up on some like wood in mm. the garage of my parents' house. So I thought, well, maybe I can figure out how to grind. I think the first, like I figure out how to ollie and the first time I got the board like up on the pipe, like the trucks hit and the board went flying, like <laughs> at ridiculously impossible speed away from me, leaving me like, temporarily like hovering in the air like over this pipe there was no way i wasn't coming down like on the pipe and like i remember in the air like oh this is why i shouldn't be skateboarding <laughs> and that was it i didn't break anything it hurt like heck i went and picked up a skateboard and it was like well i'll just use this to get around and maybe ollie and that's about it like no tricks no kickflips or anything like that just yeah i always wanted to do tricks but i a yeah. didn't have a board to do them and b was never they're really hard never, yeah it's really I, hard. I could, I could maybe ollie, maybe, but I don't think I could even do that really. Yeah, my ollie would be, you know, measured in a couple of inches. Like <laughs> technically, the board was not on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like I don't it. think I was ollieing over anything. Like I would, you know, if I was ollieing, it was happening like I was moving very slowly. I was getting it up and then back down, and maybe staying on the board for the duration of the rollout. I mean, my tr- my trick was was being able to skateboard over like cracks in sidewalk. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> without, good. I, uh, without, without the board, without like the wheels just hitting the crack and sending me flying, which also happened. So that was when I learned that if you like kick the the back, you know, the front up a little bit, and you can get over the yeah. We had one of those dogs that liked to like really pull in a leash and run. So when I got the skateboard, I thought this is going to be great. Like we're just going to hit the road. <laughs> Um, and I greatly overestimated how much control I would have. Like, so we came to the first corner, you know, the road <laughs> where we turned. more of a sled dog situation. Yeah, and he, like, turned to the corner and started running 90 degrees the direction I was going, and I tried to turn, and then I was, like, off the board flailing, running after him, and the board was still going the same direction it had been previously, 90 degrees to where we were going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did much better on rollerblades letting him pull me, but I was much younger and stupider then, so... In that story, even though I'm sure the dog was bigger, I'm picturing a very tiny dog, which makes it more fun. So was I, actually. Like this little, like, Yorkshire Terrier. He was a Dalmatian, but he was a runt of the litter. So he didn't look like that beefy Dalmatian you see. Like, he looked really like a malnourished Dalmatian, like, throughout his life. Uh, Really pale spots and stuff. I mean, he was fine. He was healthy. He just, you know, he didn't eat well. 
<laughs> yeah, he just didn't didn't eat well as a kid. It didn't, you know, grew up in this like weird, you know, Dalmatian thing that wasn't wasn't a Dalmatian anybody wanted. I wanted him. I loved him. He's a great dog. Wasn't oh. a Dalmatian that anyone wanted. That sounds like a children's book. <laughs> <laughs> the Dalmatian he, that no one wanted. He was great when uh, when so we got him when I was in, I guess high school probably. And then I went to college and came back and he, he would like, he always, you know, be waiting on my bed when I came home from college and stuff. And, um, and then when I got married, like we, uh, Ron and I would go over and steal him from time to time and take him out, you know, park and mm-hmm. stuff. And we went out one time, this kid had been eating Cheetos and because he was mostly white with like very light gray spots, this kid was petting him and he just like had an orange head. For the <laughs> <end of him. laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. He was a good dog. He was a very uh, friendly dog. Liked to run. So Wait, what, like Allison, you. is Poganology? Yes. Poganology is da, 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 the study of beards. Nope. <laughs> that is the wrong definition. <laughs> <laughs> we got the study part right. I was surprised that ology actually meant the study of something. It is. I, thought, I know I, that. I thought I was just making that up. I knew that to be true. The study of, of the wearing of a beard. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Some people consider I, themselves pogonologists, legitimately. So, I am, like, imagining that situation where someone's wearing a lab coat, like, digging in there and, like, you know, really, like, poking around with, like, a glove on one hand and, like, a little plastic pick on the other to determine, like, growth directionality and age <laughs> of hairs. and The whole thing. I mean, like, you can, yeah. like... Like barbers consider themselves poganologists, and then also just people who study the history of facial do, hair. Do all barbers consider themselves poganologists, or just no, like well-versed just barbers? Really hipster barbers. I'm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Well, barbers in Portland. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's probably a place in Portland that is like billed as, um, you know, if they want smart something brand poganology. Brand. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I would go there with my shaved face and ask for advice. You're like, I need a, I need a, po- a poganology consultation. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What's the, what's the beard for my face? It's going to require the least amount of effort. <laughs> least amount of effort. They're like, just let it grow. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah, but I have, I, I go through like a very homeless stage really early on when I'm growing a beard. Like five days in, like I get that like, Oh, he's fallen on hard times kind of look. <laughs> and it falling. lasts for like a month and then it gets thick. But there's like that time there where I I have to be okay with looking like I should be in like a Florida man like headshot on the internet. You have to get I, over that initial speed bump, yeah. Yeah. So the only time I've had like a really good beard in my life, like I had that month and it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Me. I uh I grew a my beard out why well, I, I did i did um i did a a thanksgiving beard once which is when you at the day after thanksgiving you just stop shaving and i stopped shaving until uh the first of the year so that's a good you know month and a half six, or two months yeah six weeks five weeks yeah month and a half yeah yeah. And, oh, yeah. and by the end of it, like my face itched all the time. It was like long and scraggly because I wasn't like, you know, trimming it or anything. I was just like, I'm just going to grow this thing and just see what happens. And I hated it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so how did you recover from that? You just shaved? I shaved all of it, everything, <laughs> like no facial hair at all. <laughs> I went from having big, bushy, horrible mess to nada. Like, I also don't like being clean shaven either. Like that just feels gross too, but like in a different way. It does. It feels greasy all the time, doesn't it? Like it's just, ugh. Yeah. I'm good like a day. Like I need to have like a day growth all the time. This is fascinating. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Faces are weird. Humans are weird. Bodies are weird. Faces are weird. Science is weird. Did, did, so I saw a thing yesterday uh, that caught my attention it was a BuzzFeed thing, but it wasn't a BuzzFeed listicle. Uh, it was just a BuzzFeed other thing. So uh, apparently there's this, there's this picture of uh, like muscle renderings of, except they're not really muscles, but, but what, it, what milk ducts actually look like under the skin. 
Mm. Um, and it, oh. it's really, really cool. But to me, I think it's really cool because they look like flowers. It looks like it, it looks like mm. what you expect, like you know, muscle rendering with like flowers stuck on like you know your breasts, mm. your chest, pectorals. And and it looks amazing, and everybody's totally grossed down by it. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Like, both like across gender spectrum, and I was like, this, that's that's nuts. Like, I mean, it's, it's logical it, though, it's right? It's amazing. Like, it looks awesome. Like you think about like natural, like natural, um, I don't know stuff, and and like how. Um, like a hexagon is a shape in nature that happens very often when you have like a bunch of circular things that butt up against each other that have, they have to fit together. Like a hexagon is naturally the way they fall into place. So I feel like that's probably naturally the way that, that ducts would work because like, it seems like a very natural shape. I mean, it works for flowers, right? Like mm -hmm. I have to spread out in like a environment, mm -hmm. you know? It also said yeah. that um, they spoke to, like, I guess, like a breast cancer expert or something, and they said that um, breast cancer usually happens when one of those duct, those nodules, uh, gets like cancer, and that's. I mean, that, that's what it happens. That's what it is. Is when one of those things gets messed up. Hmm. So it was interesting to actually sort of be actually be able to like visualize what that looks like mm -hmm. within an actual shape. Mm -hmm. Like, but literally, it looks like a flower. It looks yeah, like you like you, so like you get a, you get a flower you pick you pick the flower and then you stick it like with with the the you know the petals like facing you right here, mm -hmm. giant flower pasties. So weird. <laughs> um, so usually we do questions at about this time. Uh, so uh, as always, uh, listeners, if, if you're out there, you can ask us questions. In fact, we encourage you to ask us questions. You can ask us questions on Twitter. Uh, we'll get them somehow. Or you can ask us questions through the website. <laughs> Who knows how Twitter works? You can ask us questions on Twitter and somehow we'll discover them. Yep. Uh, you can ask us questions on the website, which is binaryjazz.us. Uh, and leave us a review if you're listening to us on one of the podcasty things, I guess, um, because that's a cool thing to do. Um, Mm. Also, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, but uh, our questions all come from Allison because um, they're coming from the vaults. And uh, I'm going to skip the most entertaining question, uh, which is, what is the most embarrassing piece of clothing you own? So most of my embarrassing clothing I have gotten rid of. <laughs> but I still have one piece of embarrassing clothing which is my dad thought it would be a good idea to get everyone in the family uh, matching Reynolds sweatshirts that say mm -hmm. like property of Reynolds family sort of thing. Like those old, like they look like gym, gym sweatshirts. Yeah. They all say Reynolds. And, and that is, and then we all had to take a picture sure. together with our Reynolds sweatshirts. <laughs> yeah. And, don't want to let that pass. That needs to be captured. And, and I, I think I've worn it uh, maybe once or twice ever because it is probably the most embarrassing article of clothing that I own. <laughs> because it is so dorky. That's classic, though. Um, I don't know. Like, Rhonda always says I look terrible in pleated pants, but I have a pair of pleated pants that I really like. <laughs> so, so, so it depends on who. Like, it depends on in the embarrassment to who. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So she hates when I wear those. I think they're comfy. I don't really care how they look. Um, we were, um, so we've been watching the show uh, Bong Appetit. Uh, it's on Viceland, and um, the pre they, it's the, it's in its third season. And the first two seasons, it was just all about like. Um, some dude who's an obvious stoner dude that's been cleaned up somehow um, has like infinite, like this ridiculously huge house and is hosting these like amazing, and it, this is like, it's, it's, a, it's a reality show. So it's not like well, they're making this up. They've, they've just bought this really expensive house. They got this ridiculous stoner dude and cleaned him up. And, and he's now hosting these like high end, like very fancy parties where the chefs cook with cannabis. 
So the third season, and both, and, and both, I mean, we watched a couple episodes here and there, and it's like, oh, this is uh, 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 kind of okay. Like, parts of it are interesting, and parts of it are just like, oh, my God, you're, you're driving me nuts, because the guy was just, like, annoying as all hell. So, so the third season, which is the current season, they've changed it up. And now um, it's, uh, uh, now it's, a, it's a cooking competition. Mm-hmm. So they have three chefs and they have a theme and they all have to cook with like with cannabis in each of the dishes. And it's like three, it's like uh, they make a infusion and then they have like special ingredients that they have to use. And then they uh, make like a savory dish and then they make a dessert. So it's like basically sort of two to three course meal, um, three courses, it's usually like an appetizer and then a, a main dish and then a dessert. And, um, and they, they, so two of the people that were in the, the previous show, not the annoying host, uh, are on the show. And it's also got Be Real from Cypress Hill, uh, which I didn't realize that was his name. I didn't know any of the Cypress Hill guys' name anyway. Uh, but Be Real is a member of Cypress Hill. <laughs> and he's on it. And they invite various like guest hosts or guest tasters, I guess. Uh, so they had like George Clinton one time. Um, but most often they have like just like, they have like people from like hip hop, uh, like rappers and stuff. And most of the time they're like, it's just r- ridiculous because they're like, to- like totally stoned already. And they've been eating food that has THC infused in it. And they're getting like, and so like by the end, it's like barely coherent. Um, <laughs> and the guy they had on, on the show, the most recent episode um, was Drom, who's a rapper I've never heard of. Um, but as soon as he came on, he looked completely like zonked out. And like, by the end, it was like, he was barely able to make sentences. And Aaron says to me, like, I'm embarrassed for him. <laughs> on his behalf. <laughs> on his behalf. He's not smart enough to be embarrassed for himself. I am embarrassed for him. <laughs> or at least not sober enough to be embarrassed for himself. <laughs> Oh, what a delicious experience, though. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so that, so there you go. There, that that justifies your your story about having somebody being embarrassed on your behalf, Gary. <laughs> oh, okay. do you actually own any uh, any clothing that that you would consider? To be That's a good question. I if I do, I don't wear it. Like obviously, obviously, but there's a bunch right. of stuff in my closet. I'm like, oh, I need to get rid of. You know, so probably amongst that. Uh, I got once this um, this button up shirt from a secondhand store that um, like if you think about like fake 1970s era like cowboy um, that's basically what this shirt would emulate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have this, I don't know. I don't know what you're describing, but the image in my mind is priceless. So it's like it's like a. Wait artificial like like retro chic cowboy style thing and i got it just because it was just priceless like i knew that i probably never wear it but if there was an occasion where i needed to be a cowboy this would be awesome (laughs) you're like this is what i need to have in my closet yes i went to i before our our company trip to panama i went to a thrift store to buy like you know nice button up like beach shirts that i don't own you know like old man type shirts you know like very much old man type shirts um so I bought them and I wore them all like, you know, once or twice down there and came back and I'm like, I'm never going to wear these again. So I took them back to the same thrift shop and just put them back in the, uh, the clothes donation box. Well, then on Saturday I was kicking around and I said, oh, we'll poke our heads in there with Tyler and uh, Charlotte. <laughs> and I had to go back to the rack and check. And sure enough, all three were hanging in there for sale yes. again. Uh, we ended up buying a baseball bat. Still looking for a home. I was going to say, did you end up buying one of them again? <laughs> no, no. Just like, and Maybe if, if they're still there next year. You get to the store, it's like, hey, actually, this, I kind of like this. And then you wear it, and you're like, oh, no, I don't like it at all. I mean, I kind of treat that store like a rental place. Like, I, I pay, and then I wear it several times and then take it back. So I have some jeans I've worn a couple times. I'm like, eh, these aren't really me. Back they go. But everything is, like, you know, under five bucks there. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of, like... I mean, I don't have to ever dress up for work. I may as well try on some different clothes. <laughs> like these fantastic khakis I'm wearing today. Super comfy. Ready for a hike. Yeah, my hiking khakis. Hiking khakis. <laughs> hiking. 
I don't know. So does Zoom just keep going? I don't know. I think we're I think we're past the point where it should have kicked us off. So I think it's doing some like promo thing, or maybe somehow I got like a premium account and I didn't realize it. Uh, at any rate, uh, we could probably do one question and then and then kick off, and I'll I'll interrupt you and pretend like the uh, the just kill yeah just kill it just wait till the opportune yeah. time and kill it yeah right so uh, we'll go on to uh, what when did you, when did you last sing to yourself and what song so I can answer this I, I don't have a song because I basically sung the entire album um, I was listening <laughs> I was listening to the new Chromio album on the drive back uh, from Southern Utah. Uh, before we we uh, put the book on for the kids because we listen to audiobooks in the car and my son like basically demands that be on all the time and we're like no we're gonna listen to music this time so yeah I sung the entire uh, new Chromio album pretty much um, what's that album called uh, Spotify help me out um, <laughs> I was like I don't think Spotify is the thing that responds to <laughs> <laughs> That's, Not yet, that's, anyway. That's the thing that uh, I listened to most recently. It is called uh, "Oh Yes, Head Over Heels" is the new album. Oh wow! I um, I don't know. I mean, I sing it myself all the time, but I can't remember what the last one was, or even a very recent one. I was singing uh, from the "Eye of the Tiger" while I was disposing of a pile of wood in the backyard with a chainsaw. <laughs> "Eye of the Tiger." That's hundred percent good... serious. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was fun. And then my son came back, and then it was out loud as well as to myself. And he's like, "Just gonna stack these up front, okay?" Ex exasperated sigh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get it. I mean, I'm with you. I'm doing the same thing myself to myself. So. I think I was singing something from the latest Lizzo album to myself. It was my yeah. I've been doing a lot of dancing with Charlotte the last couple of days too. So, I guess there's likely something to happen in there. I was singing while dancing. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.